catch that. Ha! You're uh, welcome, everybody, to Carvis Twigs Bird of the Day. Now, now, Neff, you you gave yeah. me a suggestion because of a type of bird that you really like, and you you suggested the erect crested penguin, probably because that's what Pen Pen from Evangelion is. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I already covered that bird. Uh, but I'm like, well, what's a similar one? Well, we gotta we gotta stick with the penguin. We gotta stick with the penguin. What kind of penguin have we not done yet? Because we've done Magellanic, we've done Adley, we've done Emperor. Uh, but this one is actually a pretty popular type of penguin. Cute little buddies. Today we are going to talk about the Rockhopper penguin. Oh, the rock hoppers. They, they're very similar to the erect crested in that they have those fun little bright feathers on their heads. Mm -hmm. Just look at these goofy little guys. I mean, come on. Penguins? <laughs> penguins are just goofy little guys. I love them, yeah. I mean, I think penguins might be like the most huggable kind of bird. You just put one in your lap and just give it a little hug and snuggle it. I mean, I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, there's just something about penguins that makes them so lovable. The way they walk, the way they talk. They're just, they're just goofy little guys. Um, usually pretty friendly towards humans, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially Adelie penguins. Oh, God. Adelie penguins oh. are always messing with Antarctic researchers. But yeah. We're going to talk a little about, about the rockhopper penguin. I like how this one's got a lot of babies in it. Look at the little babies. Look at them. Look at the little, little baby little, at the little bottom little there. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, these little fellers are 18 to 23 inches long, which actually makes them one of the smaller species of penguin. They're little guys. They're, they're just little guys. They, they're little guys. You know, like an emperor penguin is up to 40 inches long. Pretty, they can get pretty big. But yeah, 18 to 23 wow. inches, a little under two feet tall. Just little guys, just little guys. Not a huge long wingspan, 16 to 22, you know. Some birds have lesser wingspan than their length, and... A lot of times that's due to them having enormous tails. But now these guys, their their wings are really more like flippers. <laughs> they, they function more <laughs> like a flipper than a wing. Because, mm -hmm. um, spoiler alert, um, penguins are flightless. Eh, yeah. they, don't, they don't fly too good. You look at that little guy's wings. They ain't going to get anybody up in the air. <laughs> the birds that can't fly. Yeah, that, they're still birds. They weigh about yeah. four and a half to seven and a half pounds. And uh, their average lifespan is about ten years long. Now, I think the oldest oh. one lives to be about 16. Um, but yeah, 10 years. Not too bad. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, when I talk about rockhopper penguins, we're actually talking about three different species. And so you have kind of down there, you see the yellow region, the green region, and the blue region. And that's kind of where you're going to be finding them. So we have the southern one, which is more kind of in the blue region. They're south of Australia. And then the uh, eastern ones are kind of more in that yellow range there. And the northern ones hang out around Argentina and Chile. Oh. So that's that's oh. what you're seeing there. Um, oh. but there's only minor differences between the species, but just enough that they are considered different species. But they're also pretty similar. They're all about the same size. There's just, I think the, uh, the uh, southern ones are the biggest. They, they're the biggest mm -hmm. of the three, but, I mean, not by a lot. We're talking, like, 10% bigger. Not, not, not a whole lot of difference. So I figure it's just like, well, yeah, yeah. might as well just talk about all three of them together because they're, they're similar enough and all the fun facts. They pretty much do things pretty much the same. But it's interesting where that line of species uh, really is drawn. Now, fun thing about penguins is that they're in the order Sphacenicus forms, um, and there's only one family in that entire order, the Sphenescidae, so all penguins are in the same order and family. Also, mm. fun fact, they're one of the few orders of birds where every single bird in that order, their common name, has the name for what we consider the order to be. So, like, the, the Sphenescidae order is referred to as penguins, and every species mm. of penguin has the word penguin in its common name. The mm -hmm. only other one of those that I know of, there's two others, and that would be owls and ostriches. Because mm. ostriches, there's only two types of ostrich. 
at all, <laughs> and they're in their own order. And then all types of owl have owl in the name, and all types of penguin have penguin in the name. But everything mm -hmm. else, it's just like, okay, you got, like, cranes and herons are in the same order. They got different common names. It's like, there's always a big mix of common names within it, but those, yeah, I don't know. That's just a silly fact. That's just one of my bird nerd taxonomy facts. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm nerdy. But nobody cares, but I care. I care. That's why I talk about it. Look at the penguin. He's cute. All right. Look at this penguin. That's a cute penguin. Look at him. Look at the tiny little feller. Now, obviously, you notice that he does not have those bright, um, those brightly colored feathers on his head. Those don't develop until about uh, a year and a half old. Not until their first, you know, first year. Uh, they breed in large, big colonies. They are communal breeders. They don't, they don't, they don't deal with that. Hey, I'm going to go off here and build a nest on my own. They find an island or an atoll, and they all build their nests in the same area. Which the nests really aren't that much. They're just really kind of like they just kind of like dig a hole in the ground. That's just like kind of a little mound, and they just lay their egg mm -hmm. in there. Now, an interesting thing that they do is that they lay two eggs at a time, but only take care of one of them and it's usually wow. the second one laid the second one oh. laid is usually a little bit bigger than the smaller one and then mm -hmm. the parents look at it and they're like well we're going to keep the bigger one and so they'll mm -hmm. push the smaller one out of the nest and just kind of sit on the bigger one now the reason one of the reasons i think they may do this is it might actually help with predation because the smaller eggs can kind of be used as bait for petrels and mm. other big nasty birds that love to because like adult penguins they don't have too many predators when they're on land um mm -hmm. but the babies and the eggs are very vulnerable to large birds like albatross and petrels and some other things they like to eat a tasty egg so mm -hmm. they sometimes almost use like the smaller egg as a sacrificial bait for those bigger birds wow. but yeah they wow. only incubate one egg even though they lay multiple which is really unusual behavior um mm. but once that egg is born they do have a pretty high survival rate and uh you know it's one of those instances where uh both parents are gonna stick around so like some penguins once the baby's born the males do everything and the females kind of just f off for a while um <laughs> but not not with these ones these ones the, the females and the males stick around um and they uh you know they pick their mate usually when they're one to two years old and they're gonna mm -hmm. stick with that mate for the rest of their life and uh often they're going to go back and use the same nest year after year so like a mating couple may end up having like seven clutches through their lifetime and they'll use that same nest for all seven clutches. Like, this is my nest. This is my spot. This is where we're going to lay the babies. But once the babies are born, then they really don't care about that spot too much and they move on because they got to go mm -hmm. where the food is. And uh, Makes sense. it's in a sense where it's like the, the parents are the general ones who are feeding the little babies. But like in terms of just like caring for them and watching out for them, it's it's a community thing. You, mm -hmm. you got thousands and thousands of baby penguins and all their parents and they kind of work together like all the adults will work together to protect the babies from predators. So if like a predator does show up, the, the adults are going to work together and protect everyone's babies because by doing that, it's just like, well, your baby is more likely to survive if everybody's working to save that baby. And so it's like, yeah, community works, people. It yeah. Don't be individualists. Be 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 community. It's better for everybody. Birds get it. Why can't humans? It works. It works for the penguins. <laughs> works for great great for the penguins. Besides, look at this little fella here. Why wouldn't you want that little fella to grow up and thrive? He's so cute. He's such a He's little so cutie. Cute. Look at this cute little baby. Hey, here's some here's some rock oh hopper God. penguins at a zoo. Let's oh God! Let me look at this. Oh. 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 Oh, look at those guys! <laughs> oh, those two are having a fun time. When they're doing that, take a look inside their mouth, and you'll be able to see how the fish goes. Yeah, Getting good little bird. Big rowdy. Yeah. Oh, look at this picture here. Look at this picture. Oh. Look at those. I love those yellow yeah. feathers. A little badass. Now, you may be wondering why are they called rock hoppers? Because these guys are excellent jumpers like amazing jumpers they because they like oh. to uh, nest and stuff on like rocky areas like 
especially in uh, you know around Tasmania or the Tierra del Fuego in uh, Argentina for uh, the eastern ones. Uh, very rocky areas, but these guys are super good at jumping up and hopping around rocks. Like literally, it's in their behavior. They will hop <laughs> up and down rocks and are very good at doing so and keeping their balance. So that's why they were called rock hoppers because they hop on rocks very well. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they are also, I mean, they're great swimmers. Obviously, penguins are great swimmers. It's what penguins do. <laughs> they, uh, they, they're, they're swimming birds. But, you know, they, they have to be underwater and in salt water. And so they have a couple adaptations that really help them with that. For example, they have two eyelids. And one of them is clear. And so when they're swimming underwater, oh. they close the clear eyelid so they can still see. But it keeps the salt water out of their eyes. Isn't that neat? Oh, that's really neat. Yeah. I never yeah. knew that. I wish I had a second pair of, I mean, like, exactly, built-in swimming goggles. I want yeah. built-in swimming goggles. That's, that's that sounds cool. handy. I know. And then, of course, they are going to swallow a lot of salt water doing their stuff. And we were talking last week about the Lace and Albatross, how they have a gland in their beak that filters salt water. Well, guess what? Penguins have that, too. At least wow. these kinds of penguins have it. So, yeah, they can swallow salt water and filter out the salt and get hydrated with it. Because, you know, normally you don't want to drink salt water. Salt water is yeah. salt water, not good to drink. Not good to drink. Now, maybe in some of the older, cuter pictures in this presentation, you wouldn't get it. But looking at this picture, yeah, you're looking at the face of a predator. A vicious predator. Mm. And if you're if you're a small little fish or a krill... Or a small little crustacean. Mm, you're a good snack for these guys. They are meat eaters. Purely meat eaters. They don't want no seaweed. They don't want no seeds or berries. No. Give them all the fish. Give them all the fish. That's what they like to eat. Um, and then, yeah, usually when they're very young, the parents will, like, eat up some fish and then regurgitate it into their baby's mouth, which is kind of gross. But like, yeah, I was talking about them being in Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. Uh, there are, you know, you can you know you can go on like a whale boat tour. Well, you can go on a penguin boat tour around the Tierra del Fuego and oh. go visit uh, the the colonies in down there in South America. It's actually a very big tourist thing to people to go out and look at the look at the penguin. I mean, shit, if I was visiting Argentina, I'd want to take one of those tours. I'd love to go see a penguin colony. You know, and yeah, they, that's fun. they they do a very good job of it because they want to make sure that these tours do not disturb the penguins, but also are good for, you know, saying, hey, we need to protect this habitat. Look at look at this. You want to protect this. We want to keep these penguins around because they're kind of a nice little national treasure of Argentina. They are not the national bird of Argentina, but I don't know. Maybe they should be. Maybe they should be. <laughs> Actually, what is a national bird of Argentina? I'm curious. Good question. Uh, let's check. The Rufus Hornero. Oh. It's just oh, yeah. a little Look. simple brown <laughs> passerine. They're it's, cute, it's but come on. You can I'm not do sure the penguins, I, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I don't when I see this, I don't think national bird. I think it's just a cute little bird. Yeah. It should be the penguins. It should be the rock jumpers. Yeah, maybe I should maybe I should cover this guy soon. They're cute little birds, but we're talking about penguins. Now you may be wondering, it's like, oh, I've seen this bird before. Yeah, you've seen this bird before. If you've seen, um, you know, Happy Feet, they're in the Happy Feet movies. Um, oh, they, I believe they're in, they're not the penguins of Madagascar, but I think that one of them, uh, like, I think in that movie, the, they meet other species of penguin and they're in that. Um, March of the Penguins, I think. I don't think they're in there. But anyway, they're in a lot of movies. There's, there's a lot of movies that have penguins in them. And, and these guys are in a lot of those movies. So, I mean, they're kind of a... They kind of, you know, got that look to them. You know, that is very fun and unique. Surf's Up? Yeah, I think they're in Surf's Up. They're, they're, just, they're just everywhere. Because they're very charismatic looking penguins. Those yellow, those yellow streaks are great for a side character voiced by Danny DeVito or something. I don't know. <laughs> Now, the sad part of this is that uh, over the last 30 years, they have been downgraded from uh, from being least concerned to they are now in the vul vulnerable status as far oh, no. because uh, over the last 30 years, they have seen 
a 30% decline in the rockhopper penguin population in the wild, which is not good. 30% over 30 years is kind of a lot. Uh, yeah, that's... Big problem yeah, is that good. climate change has changed what's in, you know, the availability of food and nesting grounds. There's been a lot of oil spills down in the uh, southern oceans there. They can cause a big problem, and that's that's obviously real bad for these penguins because it doesn't just kill the penguins, it kills their food. And then, of course, overfishing. Uh, too many fishing vessels out there taking too many fish out of the sea, and that's their food. So they've had less food. So they're not in a good they're not in a good position right now. Um, they they don't have the ability to adapt to not having food or places to lay babies. So yeah, um, I don't think they're going to be going extinct in our lifetimes anytime soon. But seeing that kind of a population decline is is very concerning, and I hope that we yeah. can reverse it because. I want these penguins to be around for future generations. Because they're so cute. They're so cute. Be nice. Yeah. They're so cute. So, what are my final <laughs> thoughts on the rock, ho rock hopper penguin? I mean, come on, it's a penguin. Who doesn't love a penguin? Yeah. I, like, penguins are just kind of their own special class. It's like, what tier are they? They're in penguin tier. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously... You like penguins a lot. What, what, what do you think of them? Why did you pick a penguin? Why did you Why did you want penguins? What do you What do you feel about penguins? I just like I just like them. They're just like special little guys. I love the way they walk, the way they waddle, and just you know when they do that little belly slide. I love that little belly slide, especially. They well, do. the funny thing is, is that rock hopper penguins don't really do the belly slide. That's why they're they're hoppers. Yeah, yeah. The belly slide is that... very much an Adelie and. Uh, um, emperor penguin kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I think it's mostly just I like their vibes. They got good vibes. They got real good vibes. Good vibes. They're just they're just goofy little guys. They're just goofy yeah. little guys. Love them. Love them. Like I said, don't they seem like the most huggable kind of bird? They do. I hug a penguin. I hug a penguin. Everyone go out and hug a penguin. Unless it clearly does not want to be hugged, then don't hug it. <laughs> <laughs> Neff, I saw you from across the atoll, and we love your vibe. Love your vibe. Shut up. Shut up. I share a hot tub with a penguin. I don't think penguins like hot tubs. I think they kind of prefer their pools to be a little cooler. I mean, that's not a thing that I talked about in the early things, because it's true of all penguins, is that penguins have incredibly dense feathers. Like, some of the most dense feathers of all birds. And that helps them stay warm and repel water and... Yeah. They don't have their feathers are very different from the feathers of different birds. Different structure, much more densely, and they just they, it helps them adapt to the cold. They like the cold. I don't like mm -hmm. it that cold. I like I, I'm a nice temp. I'm a temperate bird. Don't like it too hot. Yeah. Don't like it too cold. Temperate bird. Like it when it just right. Yes. All right. Well, we're gonna call this bird of the day done, and it's time to get us back to the studio. All right.